In order to get the most out of this course, there are a few things that it would be helpful for you to know already. First of all, it would definitely be very helpful for you to have a basic knowledge of JavaScript and ideally a knowledge of how front-end frameworks work as well. Now, if you haven't already worked with these a little, I'd recommend you take a look at one of the JavaScript basics courses in the library first and then come back to this one since we won't be covering any of the very basics of JavaScript in this course. Now, It would also be helpful for you to have some experience with basic command line operations. All we're really going to be using in this course is basic commands like make directory to make directories, cd to change directories, and ls to see the contents of a directory. As well as a few commands specific to Node.js and Vue. And that, alright, so as we've seen, I'm going to be using code spaces to write all of the code for this course. And I highly recommend you do the same thing. But if you want to develop on your computer, you're going to want to make sure that you have an up-to-date version of Node.js and NPM installed. Now, you can tell if you don't have them installed if you open up a terminal and run the command node, and you see something that looks like this. Where it says, command not found, node. And the same thing for NPM. If you see that it says, command not found, NPM. Now, in this case, all you need to do is install node.js and that will install both of those commands automatically for you. So you're just going to want to navigate to node.js's website and download the LTS version, whatever version that happens to be for you. And once you open that up and install it, you should be able to run those commands. And sure enough, you'll see that instead of command not found, node, you'll see something like, welcome to node.js version blah, blah, blah. Now, if you want to see what exact version of node.js and npm you have, you can run the command node v. That will show you the current version of node. And if you want to see the current version of npm, you can run npm v, and that will show you the current version of npm. So again, if you want to follow along with this course on your local computer, instead of in code spaces, just make sure that you have these two installed. Okay. So we're going to be building the front end of our e-commerce site using Vue, but before we get started you may be wondering why we choose to use Vue in the first place. So to get a little bit more specific with this question. The first question is why we'd want to use a front end library at all, instead of just creating our site using basic HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, or instead of using some other low-code solutions such as WordPress or Wix? Well, Compared to hand coding a site. Full featured front end libraries such as Vue have a lot of advantages. The main advantage, though, is that they make the task of creating a performant website much simpler and faster without taking away any of the fine grained control from the programmer. They allow us to create modular, reusable components that can then be rearranged into a fully functional website instead of having to hand code each individual page in our site one by one. So to give you an example of this, imagine that we want to create a simple blog site with let's say 100 articles, each with pretty much the same structure. Well, what if we then wanted to add a sign-up form, or something like that, to all of our pages? Well, if our site was just a collection of HTML documents, we'd have to actually make this same change to 100 separate files. And that's definitely not a pleasant task by any stretch of the imagination. However, with front-end libraries such as Vue, all of our pages would be based on a single reusable page component, so we'd only have to make this change once to see it across all of our pages automatically. Okay. So that's why we might use a library like Vue instead of just hand coding our site using HTML, CSS, and possibly JavaScript. The next question is why we'd use a front-end library like Vue over low or no-code platforms such as WordPress or Wix, or Squarespace, like you see here. Well, first of all, since this course is aimed primarily at developers, if you want to create a full-stack website and aren't already a fairly strong developer, I actually would recommend that you use one of these platforms instead of Vue, right? Honestly. 
It'll probably end up being much more difficult for you in the long run if you try and create a code-based site with Vue if you still struggle with basic coding concepts. Alright, now another question, and this is probably the most common question I get asked. Is why you would choose Vue over some of the other front-end libraries like React or Angular? Now, this may come as a bit of a shock to those of you who are looking to learn the best front-end library, but in my opinion there is no single best front-end library, and here's why. Like most other pointless debates inside and outside the programming world, finding the best front-end library is extremely subjective, so one developer may say that Vue is hands down the best front-end library, another developer may say, no. React is the best front-end library. And a third developer might say that Angular or Svelte, or Ember, or any of the many other front-end libraries is the best one out there. And what they actually mean, in most of these cases, is that they've found the best library for their own needs, or more commonly, their favorite front-end library is the only one that they've ever worked with, and therefore they think it's the greatest. That's a pretty common thing to happen in the front-end development world. All right, so all that being said, a better question might be something like, what is Vue's unique value proposition compared to some of the other libraries out there? In other words, what advantage does it provide over libraries like Angular and React? Well, Vue's main advantage is that it's designed to be added incrementally to existing sites. And, in fact, it even says this on Vue's website, it's nicknamed itself the Progressive JavaScript Framework, meaning that if you already have a website written using HTML and CSS, it's pretty easy to add Vue into that, whereas with React and Angular it might be a little bit more difficult. So, now that we're a little more familiar with the Vue library and some of the benefits it provides us with, let's get started creating the Vue front-end for our full-stack project. Alright, now the first thing we'll need to do here is install something called the Vue CLI. And what you're going to want to do there is open up a terminal, and you can do that by pressing Ctrl J or Command J, depending on your operating system. And inside that terminal, what we're going to want to do is globally install the Vue CLI package by saying npm install g and then the package name is at Vue slash CLI. Now if you hit enter, that's going to install that globally for us. And what this is going to allow us to do is create new view projects just by running a simple command. So let's wait for this to finish. And once it's done, what we're going to do is create a new view project. This is where all of our front end code is going to be, by simply running view. Create, and then the name of our project. And since we're going to have both the front end and back end here, we'll call this front end project front dash end. So if we hit enter, that's going to bring us through a series of prompts asking us what features of Vue we want. The first question here is which version of Vue we want to use. We're going to select Vue 3 here. And then it's going to ask us which package manager we want to use. And I'm going to select NPM here, but Yarn is perfectly fine to use as well if you want to use that instead. So I'm going to use NPM and hit enter and that will generate a new view project for us. So this is going to take a minute or two but once it finishes, we should see that we now have this front-end folder over here in our file tree. And if you open that up, you can see that it has a lot of files in here, as well as some other directories. And we'll be discussing the actual structure of this and what all these files are very shortly. But for now, just know that that is our front-end project. So. The first thing that we're going to want to do now that we have this new project is run it, just to make sure everything is working on our end. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to start off by changing directories into that new front-end directory. And you can do that in your terminal by typing cd front-end. That'll bring us into the front-end folder here. And you can see all the contents of this folder just by typing ls by the way. And you can see everything that we see inside of here, printed out in our console. And in order to run a view project, what we're going to want to do is reuse the command npm run serve and hit enter. And what that's going to do is it's going to build our project, 
and it's going to serve it on a development server so that we can see it in a browser. All right? Now what you'll see printed out here is that it says that our app is running on HTTP localhost 8080. However, this is only if you are running it locally on your own computer. If you're using code spaces, what you're going to need to do is go to the ports tab, right? This basically maps all of the ports that are running in code spaces to an actual URL you can visit. And you're going to want to take a look at this local address property of port 8080. And if you go over to this little world icon next to that and click on it, what that's going to do is it's going to open that up in a browser. And sure enough, we see the view app we just created running in our browser. And here, let me just take that out of full screen so you can see this is in fact running in our browser. And now if we go back to our project what we should be able to do is make changes to our code. And you can do this just by going to front end. And if we go to say the source folder and open up app.view, we'll talk in more detail about what all of these are by the way, shortly. What you should be able to do is make a few changes, right? So for example we have this image alt view logo thing, that is the logo that we were seeing on our site. What we can actually do is just delete everything inside these template tags and replace them with whatever we want. I'm just going to use an h1 heading and we'll say something like, hello from view. And if we close out the tag, you'll- Okay, so we've got our view project set up now. But before we get started building our app, I wanted to give you a brief walkthrough of all the files that the view CLI created for us, right? We created this new frontend folder with a bunch of stuff in it. So this'll hopefully help orient you a little bit in navigating the project. But before we do that actually, there are two things I wanted to mention. The first thing that you may have noticed is that in our terminal, we're getting this error related to the hello world component that we removed from our template previously. So in order to get rid of that error, what you're going to want to do is remove this import statement from the script tag in our component. And you're also going to want to remove hello world from the components object. And that's just because Vue is very tidy about this sort of thing. It doesn't like extra code hanging around, so that's why we were getting the error. And you should see now that we've done that and saved our file that the error has gone away, and that should mean that our frontend project over in our other tab here will update automatically now. Okay, so that's the first thing. The second thing I wanted to mention is that more than likely you're currently missing syntax highlighting for your view project, right? So all of your text is probably just in black and white. If you want to, you should be able to open up this extensions tab and search for view. And there are lots of different view extensions that you can install. The one that I installed here is the most popular one called View Language Features Voler. All right, so feel free to install that if you want to. And you may have to refresh this project by clicking the refresh button for that to actually take effect. Cool. So now that we've added those two things, the next thing that we're going to do is talk about all of the files inside our frontend directory. So the first folder that's in here is the public directory, and inside there we have this index.html file. Now this index.html file is what the user will be sent directly when they open up our view site, right? Similar to what we did by opening up this frontend tab over here. And if we take a look at the contents of this index.html file, the view app that we end up creating is going to be rendered directly into this div with the id of app. So in other words, when the user receives this empty html file, that's going to load our view code, right? The actual JavaScript code we're writing as part of our view application, it's going to run that and render our app inside this div. And by the way, don't worry too much about the actual mechanics of this. This is all something that the view CLI takes care of behind the scenes for us when we run the app with npm run serve. So let's see. Besides the public and the source directory which we'll talk about in more detail shortly. The rest of the files inside this frontend directory are pretty much just configuration files. So you have configuration for Babel, if you want to play around with the JavaScript settings. We have configuration for Vue itself, and we also have the package.json and packagelock.json files. Which just contain extra information about our project such as what dependencies we've installed. Cool. So now that we've talked about those, let's go into our source directory, 
because generally as a view developer this is where you're going to be spending most of your time. Now this contains all of the components for our view project, and the components are just sort of the building blocks of our application. So we already saw that we have the app component, right, which is called app view, and view components generally have the dot view extension as you'll see. Now the app component is the top level component in our application. So in other words, whatever other components we create, they're going to be rendered either directly or indirectly by this app component. Now in addition to the app component, you'll also see this main.js file. And this is what's referred to as the entry point for our application. So this right here is the code that actually renders our view app into that div that we saw earlier in the index.html file. So those are two very important files, obviously. We'll be working with them a lot. But besides those, we have this assets folder which just contains static assets for our project, right? So we see that we have logo.png inside there. We generally won't need to work too much with those assets, but we will see them at one point in the future. And inside this components directory, we'll see that we have this hello world component. This is just something that the view CLI created for us to show us how view components work, right? That's what was being rendered inside our app component beforehand. So what we're actually going to do is just remove this hello world component altogether, because we don't need it. And you can do that just by right clicking on it and clicking delete permanently. Okay, so once we've clicked that, we're going to say delete. And that will get rid of that file for us. You are going to want to leave the components folder around, because that's where we're going to be adding a lot of other components. Cool. So anyway, that's really the main directories we're going to be working with here. Any of the other details that you may be wondering about, chances are we're going to see those later on in the course. Thank you.